Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Helena, located in Phillips County, Arkansas, between Union Major General Benjamin M. Prentiss and his 4,100 Union defenders from the 13th Division, and Confederate Lieutenant General Pephelius H. Holmes and his 7,600 attackers from the District of Arkansas. This happened on the 4th of July, 1863. Confederate command was still trying to relieve the pressure of the Union siege of Vicksburg. So Confederate General Holmes ignored reports that the high-value supply depot at Helena, Arkansas was very well defended and ordered an attack. He thought to address this difficulty by utilizing a four-pronged attack to try and help overwhelm Union General Prentice's defenders. The planned attack would be to have Confederate assault Union Battery C in the center of the Union defenses. Meanwhile, Brigadier General James F. Fagan was to attack Union Battery D on Hydeman's Hill, and General John S. Marmaduke, supported by General Lucius M. Walker, would take out Riders Hill and set up an artillery position there that would allow the Confederates to strike the Union batteries A and B. Holmes was so sure of this plan that he guaranteed Confederate victory even though the Union troops would be aware of the Confederate approach and prepare appropriately. Fagan's attack was slowed down on July 3rd by Union pickets felling trees. The purpose was to slow down the Confederate advance. During his advance as well, Fagan came across African-American refugees, killed some of them, and took the rest prisoner. On the morning of July 4th, Fagan took three infantry regiments and charged the Union defenses. Unfortunately, Union Battery C and D rained artillery fire. Marmaduke and his forces paused their attack to wait in Confederate artillery to be brought up and help them take Riders Hill. Meanwhile, Confederate General Brooks, leading another assault force, was stopped by the 1st Missouri Light Artillery Regiment, Battery K along with the Union gunboat Tyler's guns. While Battery K itself did not do a lot of damage, the gunboat's cannons disrupted Brooks's troops until after 8 a.m. that morning. Confederate General Sterling Price's attacking forces were slowed down by the hills and ravines of the area, forcing him to leave behind his own artillery units. Despite this, the Confederate 9th Missouri Sharpshooter Battalion came up the Graveyard Hill in a pre-dawn light, but was held back by Price, who thought he should wait until full daylight to perform the assault. The lack of movement by Price forced General Holmes to personally go to General Price and order him to attack and not wait for full light. While all of this was happening, Fagan and his men attacked, but without the support of Price, who was still arguing with Holmes over when to attack. Even with the losses from Union Battery C and D, Fagan's troops were able to break through four lines of Union infantry, but were finally stopped just short of Battery D's actual position. Confederate General Marmaduke had additional problems. As he approached the Union positions, the fog he was using to conceal his troops had dissipated, and the Union's 29th Iowa assaulted the approaching Confederates, driving off Marmaduke and his attack on Riders Hill. Meanwhile, Confederate Brigadier General James F. Fagan led his brigade in capturing multiple rifle pits at Hindman Hill. The Union defenders surprised themselves as well as everyone else by eventually beating off Fagan's forces later in the morning. However, luck was not completely gone, as Confederate General Price was able to overrun and push out Battery C on Graveyard Hill when he began his attack, until the Union defenders at Fort Curtis, along with the Union gunboat the Tyler, stopping the Confederates dead in their tracks. By 10.30 a.m., Confederate General Holmes sounded a retreat. The Union then regained their positions on Graveyard Hill. Casualties may not have been high as Gettysburg, but they were severe. Out of 7,646 Confederates who were involved in the attack, at least 173 were killed, 687 were wounded, and 776 missing or captured. Although this view was countered by Union Commander Prentiss, who claimed at least 300 Confederates were killed and more than 1,100 were captured. Union losses were not as high, but still consisted of 239 total casualties, consisting of at least 57 dead, 146 wounded, and 36 missing or captured. The worst impact of the battle was that Union used Helena to stage an assault in the Little Rock, Arkansas later that summer. All this combined to break down trust and morale within Confederate commanders as they blamed each other for the losses. The most extreme was that Confederate General Marmaduke and General Walker engaged in a duel in September of 1863 after the Union was invading Little Rock. This is where Marmaduke killed Walker during that duel. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.